اهلا وسهلا بالجميع محاضرة اليوم بعنوان Spectrum of a Single Tone Frequency Modulated Signal The objective of this lecture is to find a meaningful definition of the bandwidth of an FM signal To accomplish that we need to find the spectrum of an FM signal with a single tone test message signal um, this is a review of the basic results from the previous lecture. The expression for an angle modulated signal is S of t equal AC cosine 2 pi FCT plus theta of t. AC is the amplitude of the unmodulated carrier. Uh, FC is the frequency of the unmodulated carrier theta of t is some phase deviation. Uh, the instantaneous frequency of s of t is fi of t equal 1 over 2 pi d by dt of 2 pi fct plus theta of t, which becomes fc plus 1 over 2 pi d theta by dt. So, this is the instantaneous frequency of an angle modulated signal in general. Um, for phase modulation, we have the phase deviation theta of t is linearly proportional to the message m of t. So theta of t equal kp times m of t. kp is the sensitivity of the phase uh, modulator in radians per volt and the standard equation for a phase modulated signal is AC cosine 2 pi FCT plus KP times M of T since theta of T is just the message times the proportionality constant as for the instantaneous frequency of the phase modulated signal, we have Fi of t equal Fc, Fc plus 1 over 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi, d theta of t by dt, which is d by dt of kp times m of t, so it's just kp over 2 pi, dm of t by dt. So, we recognize that the instantaneous frequency of a phase modulated signal is proportional to the derivative of the message, while the phase difference is proportional to the message itself. And, بالنسبه to the frequency modulation. Again, um, S of t equal, this is the angle modulated signal, AC cosine 2 pi FCT plus theta of t, and the instantaneous frequency is FC plus 1 over 2 pi d theta by dt in general. Now, for frequency modulation, theta of t equals 2 pi Kf integration of m of alpha d alpha. Kf in hertz per volt and the instantaneous frequency f, uh, fi of t equal fc plus Kf m of t. So for a frequency modulated signal, the instantaneous frequency is linearly proportional to the message to the message signal. Kf is the sensitivity of the modulator in hertz per volt. So we know now the relationship between the instantaneous frequency and the message m of t, and so we can uh, obtain the phase difference theta of t when we have uh, this relationship between f i of t and m of t. So 
the phase difference or the phase deviation is just 2 pi kf integration integration from 0 to t of m of alpha d alpha and the time domain representation for an fm signal is ac cosine 2 pi fct plus 2 pi kf integration of m of alpha d alpha so these are the three basic relationships for a frequency modulated signal the first is that the frequency instantaneous frequency is linearly proportional to the message signal the other one is that the phase deviation which is the integration of this term with respect to t is 2 pi kf the integration from 0 to t m of alpha d alpha and the third one is the time domain representation of the fm signal ac cosine 2 pi fct plus 2 pi kf integration from 0 to t m of alpha d alpha so these are the three main relationships for an fm signal in general our test signal is a single tone sinusoidal signal m of t equal a m cosine 2 pi fmt this is the signal for which we need to find the spectrum of the fm modulated signal so when um, the message takes this sinusoidal form the instantaneous frequency f i of t equal f c plus k f m of t k f times a m cosine 2 pi f m t so this is the instantaneous frequency now the time domain function is obtained by substituting m of t into the phase deviation in this equation and so s of t equal ac cosine 2 pi fct plus 2 pi kf integration from 0 to t a m cosine omega m alpha d alpha which becomes ac cosine 2 pi fct plus beta sine 2 pi fmt this is the standard equation for an fm signal with sinusoidal modulation beta beta is kf times am divided by fm so kf am divided by fm which is the peak frequency deviation divided by the message bandwidth or delta f over fm so this is the fm modulation index now we consider the spectrum of the single tone fm signal let m of t equal a m cosine 2 pi fm t as we have said before be the test message signal then the fm signal is s of t equal a c cosine 2 pi f c t plus beta sine 2 pi f m t and beta is the f m modulation index defined as the peak frequency deviation by the message frequency now s of t can be expanded in this form s of t equals um, real part of of course there is an ac here real part of e to the j 2 pi fct plus beta sine 2 pi fmt and this exponential term can be expressed as a product of two exponentials real part of e to the j 2 pi fct this term depends only on the carrier e to the j 2 pi fct times another term which depends on the message 
which is e to the j beta sine 2 pi fmt. So we can um, justify this relationship by referring to Euler's um, formula, which is e to the j theta equals cosine theta plus j sine theta, which means that cosine theta is just the real part of e to the j theta. So cosine theta, cosine theta, uh, e to the j theta consists of a real part plus an imaginary part. The real part, cosine theta, is the real part of e to the j theta. So we have cosine theta equals real part of e to the j theta. Now, the sinusoidal waveform beta sine 2 pi fmt. We know that m of t equals sine 2 pi fmt. This is uh, a periodic function with period uh, tm equal 1 over fm. And we, when we multiply it by a constant beta, still beta sine 2 pi fmt is periodic with period tm equal 1 over fm. Um, the exponential function e to the j beta sine 2 pi fmt, this is the same periodic function here, so we're raising e to the j of a periodic function. This function here, e to the j beta sine 2 pi fmt, is also periodic with the same period as that of m of t. And this, the period is tm equal 1 over fm. Now we can prove this result by um, considering the function, this exponential, at some time t plus the period. So we consider e to the j beta sine 2 pi fm t plus tm. tm is the period. Again, this is e to the j, and then we can break this term into a product of two terms. The first one, e to the j beta sine 2 pi fmt. The second one is e to the j beta sine 2 pi fm times tm. e to the j beta sine 2 pi fm tm. Now, fm times tm equals 1. fm times tm equals 1. So, we have... Tm times Fm equal 1, and sine 2 pi is 0, sine 2 pi Fm Tm sine. This sine, the sine of this term equal to 0, so we have e to the j beta times 0, which means that this whole term now equal 1, e to the j 0 equal 1. So, we have proved that this function, this function is periodic because it satisfies the condition of periodicity. That is the function f of t plus tm equal the function at time t. So, e to the j beta sine 2 pi fmt. In conclusion, this is a periodic function with period tm. طبعاً, 
um, this is um, uh, this is an FM signal modulating um, this sinusoidal message. As we can see, the FM signal is periodic with the same period as the message M of T. Uh, this is M of T. It's a sinusoidal function and it's periodic. And we can observe by examining the modulated signal here, the FM modulated signal, that the FM signal repeats itself every TM seconds. So this is one cycle of the message. This is one cycle of the periodic FM signal. And this is another cycle of the message and another cycle of the FM modulated signal. So this is the basic idea that um, since the message is periodic, then this complex exponential term is also periodic with the same period as that of the message signal. Bin Kamel, uh, so S of T equal AC cosine 2 pi FCT plus beta sine 2 pi FMT as we have done on the previous slide S of T equals real part of E to the J 2 pi FCT E to the J 2 pi, E to the J beta sine 2 pi FMT sine 2 pi FMT is periodic with period uh, TM the whole function e to the j beta sine 2 pi fmt is also periodic with the same period tm equal 1 over fm. Now we know that a periodic function g of t can be expanded into, into a complex Fourier series as g of t in general equal summation n minus infinity to infinity c sub n e to the j n omega m t this is the complex form of the Fourier series now these complex coefficients can be evaluated using this relationship c sub n equal 1 over t m the integration from 0 to t m of g of t g of t times the conjugate function e to the minus j n omega m t d t. So this is the complex coefficient. Now we can call this function, call this whole function, this periodic function, we can call it g of t. And therefore we can obtain the Fourier coefficients for this periodic function c sub n equal 1 over t sub m integration from 0 to t m this g of t which is this function e to the j beta sine 2 pi f m t times e to the minus j n omega m t dt it turns out that the, the Fourier coefficient, this Fourier coefficient in this form, in this integral form, is nothing but J sub n of beta, where J sub n is the Bessel function of the first kind of order n. So C sub n equals J sub n of beta. Beta is the FM modulation index, J sub n is the Bessel function of the first kind of order n. On the next slide, we will describe these Bessel functions along with their solutions and properties. Therefore, therefore, um, this G of t equal this coefficient C sub n times e to the j n omega mt. Now we can 
replace C sub N with this coefficient here. So G of T now equal J sub N E to the J N omega M T. C sub N E to the J N omega M T. Now back to S of T. This S of T equals real part of e to the j 2 pi fct times this function and now this function this function is expanded in a Fourier series this Fourier series j sub n of beta e to the j n omega mt therefore s of t equals ac times the real part of e to the j 2 pi fct e to the j 2 pi fct times this summation from minus infinity to infinity of j sub n of beta e to the j n omega m t. Now, this index does not depend on n, so we can, um, here we can uh, insert it inside uh, the summation and so s of t equals ac the real part of the summation from minus infinity to infinity j sub n of beta e to the j 2 pi 2 pi f c plus n f m t and again using Euler's formula s of t equals ac times j sub n of beta cosine 2 pi fc plus n fmt. Since the real part of this expon complex exponential is the cosine. So finally, finally, this is our final result that S of t, the FM modulated signal, S of t equal AC times summation from minus infinity to infinity of J sub n of beta, J sub n of beta, this is the uh, complex Fourier coefficient, cosine 2 pi FC, this is the unmodulated carrier frequency, plus n times FM, FM is the frequency of the message signal and n is an integer which runs between runs between minus infinity and infinity. Um, the Bessel function. نعرف البداية Bessel equation خصائص Bessel equation. The Bessel equation of order n is x square d2y by dx square plus x dy by dx plus x square minus n square times y equal to zero. This is called the Bessel equation of order n. Those of you who are familiar with ordinary differential equations know that this is a second order uh, differential equation with variable coefficients. And so this equation can be solved using what is called the power series method. And so this is a second order differential equation with variable coefficients. We can solve it using the power series method. The solution for each value of n, for each value of n, the solution of this differential equation is what is called j sub n of x. J is the solution to this differential equation. N is this integer in the equation. And X, of course, is the variable. So th this is the Bessel function of the first kind of order N. Of course, um, uh, any differential equation of uh, second order must have two linearly independent solutions. The first one is called, this is called the first kind, which is the solution to this differential equation for 
a an integer n there is another linearly independent solution to this differential equation for the same value of n which is uh, the Bessel function of the second kind uh, the figure below shows the first three Bessel functions now uh, when n is zero when n is zero the solution to this differential equation for x for any value of x follows this black curve okay so this is j0 j0 of x this is j0 of x when x is 0 its value is 1 when n is 1 when n is 1 the solution to this differential equation is this blue curve it starts from the origin and continues to infinity when n is 2 we have j2 of n and we have this red curve Okay. Again, it goes to infinity. Um, there are many properties of the Bessel functions, but we will just uh, list uh, some of them. First, j sub n of x equal minus 1 to the power n j sub minus n of x. Here, we're um, relating the Bessel function with positive n to the Bessel function with negative n. So j sub 1 of x equal minus 1 j sub minus 1 of x. So this is the first property. Uh, the second property relates the even and odd properties relative to x j sub n of x equal minus 1 to the power n j sub n of minus x which means that when n is odd when n is odd we have j sub n of x equal minus j sub n of minus x which means that the Bessel function for odd values of n is an odd function for even values of n j sub n of x equal minus 1 to the power n j sub n of minus x this minus 1 to the power n when n is even this is 1 and so the function is even. And we have also another property called the recurrence formula. J sub n minus 1 of x plus j sub n plus 1 of x equal twice n divided by x j sub n of x. Uh, this recurrence relationship means that if we know the previous two Bessel functions we can generate we can generate uh, the next Bessel function so j sub n plus 1 of x can be related to j sub n of x and j sub n minus 1 of x essentially if we know j0 of x and j1 of x we can generate through this recurrence formula all Bessel functions j sub 2 of x, j sub 3 of x, j 4 of x, and so on. So this is the importance of this relationship. <clears throat> For small values of x in the neighborhood of 0, j sub n of x equal x to the power n divided by 2 to the power n n factorial so 
it's a power series expansion in the neighborhood of zero and when uh, for the first Bessel function j0 of x in the neighborhood of zero its value is close to one as for the first Bessel function this one in blue it means that in the neighborhood of zero the first Bessel function behaves um, as a linear function in x, x over 2. Uh, for large values of x, j sub n of x approximately equals square root of 2 over uh, pi x cosine x minus pi over 4 minus n pi over 2, which means that this Bessel function um, behaves like a damping um, sinusoidal function. For values of x, as x increases, the amplitude of this sinusoidal function decreases. And finally, the summation from minus infinity to infinity of j sub n of x square equals 1. That is to say, uh, for a given value of x, if we take this value and square it, and this value and square it, and this value and square it, we obtain, we obtain 1. So the summation of j sub n of x square equals 1. Again, for a single tone, fm signal, uh, s of t can be expanded in a Fourier series s of t equal a c summation j sub n of beta cosine 2 pi f c plus n f m t um, it's the sum of an infinite number of sinusoidal terms each sinusoidal term is weighted by a different coefficient if we take the Fourier transform we know that the Fourier transform of a cosine function consists of two impulses, and so uh, this is the Fourier transform, AC over 2, J sub N of beta, delta of F minus FC plus NF MT plus delta of F plus FC plus NF MT. Now we can expand just to see how the uh, FM signal looks like. S of T equal AC, J0, J0, we start with N equal to 0, J0 of beta, cosine 2 pi FCT. When N is 0, we have AC, j0 of beta cosine 2 pi fct then when n is 1 we have j sub 1 of beta cosine 2 pi fc plus fmt ac j1 of beta cosine 2 pi fc plus fmt then we take uh, this uh, term when n is minus 1 when n minus 1 n minus 1 so ac j sub minus 1 of beta cosine 2 pi fc minus fm t then we take n equal 2 ac j2 of beta cosine 2 pi fc plus 2 fm t then we take n minus 2 ac j sub minus 2 of beta cosine 2 pi fc minus 2 fm t and so on just we recall the properties of uh, these Fourier uh, coefficients or Bessel functions we recall that 
j sub minus 1 of beta j sub minus 1 of beta equal minus j sub 1 of beta also j sub minus 2 of beta equal j sub 2 sorry this is j sub 2 of beta and j minus 3 of beta equal minus j sub 3 of beta and j minus 4 of beta equal j sub 4 of beta and so on so basically basically uh, the fm signal consists of an infinite number of sinusoidal terms this component this component at fc represents the Fourier transform of this sinusoidal term AC J0 of beta cosine 2 pi FCT. Of course, we have uh, the negative part of the spectrum, which we don't uh, show, and we, hold, we also plot the absolute value of S of F, the Fourier transform. Um, so this term represents the component at the carrier frequency fc with weight j0 of beta when n is 1 when n is 1 we have a sinusoidal term at fc plus fm and weight j sub 1 of beta at n minus 1 for n equal minus 1 we have the absolute value of this term AC J sub minus 1 of beta over 2 now this term equals this term meaning that the spectrum is symmetrical around the carrier frequency FC um, for n equal to 2 this is FC plus 2 FM and this is fc minus 2 fm again due to this to these properties these heights are the same and this is j3 of beta and this is j minus 3 of beta and so on so this is this is the fourier transform of a general uh, frequency modulated signal with sinusoidal uh, message in an interview, that the spectral components are separated by Fm. That is, this separation is Fm, and this separation between these two spectral components is Fm, and this is Fm, and so on. So, this is um, uh, an important feature of Fm signal, that is the separation between the spectral lines is just the message frequency FM. Uh, a second feature which we will explore later is that the bandwidth of the FM signal is twice uh, the modulation index plus one times the message frequency. And here we are referring uh, to the band of frequencies where most of the significant components of the spectrum fall. هون بنعيد مرة ثانية اللي حكيناه على السلايد السابقة عن خصائص ال عن خصائص ال FM signal. So a few remarks about the FM spectrum. The FM signal S of t equal AC cosine 2 pi FCT plus beta sine 2 pi FMT. This is the standard equation of the FM signal. This FM signal can be represented in a Fourier series in this form where where it consists of infinite number of sinusoidal terms AC J sub n of beta cosine 2 pi FC plus n FM T مثل ما شفنا على السلايد السابقة we can uh, expand this term and show explicitly uh, the first few terms, this term AC J0 corresponds to uh, the index N equal to zero. So we have AC 
j0 of beta cosine 2 pi fct. So this term corresponds to the carrier, to the unmodulated carrier. Um, the amplitude of this sinusoidal term is AC times J0. It's weighted by the Bessel function of the first kind of order 0. When N is 1, we have AC J1 of beta cosine 2 pi FC plus FMT. When N is minus 1, we have AC J minus 1 of beta cosine 2 pi FC minus FMT and so on. When N is 2, we have this equation and when N is 3, so uh, as we have said before, the spectrum is symmetrical around the carrier frequency FC. So the FM signal consists of an infinite number of spectral components concentrated around the unmodulated carrier frequency FC. Therefore, therefore, the theoretical bandwidth of the signal is infinity. That is to say, if we need to recover the FM signal without any distortion, all spectral components must be accommodated. This means that a channel with infinite bandwidth is needed. This is, of course, not practical since the frequency spectrum is shared by many users. يعني حتى نقدر نسترجع ال المسج سيجنال بشكل كامل ال لازم نأخذ كل كل frequency components من minus infinity to infinity. فهذا طبعا بيعني إنه ال bandwidth لل FM signal هو عبارة عن infinity. ف um, if we sum the power in all spectral components from minus infinity to infinity, we should obtain the total power in the transmitted signal. And the bandwidth, the theoretical bandwidth of an FM signal, as we see, we have a summation over an infinite number of terms. And as such, the bandwidth of S of T is infinity. This is the theoretical bandwidth of the FM signal. Um, power in the spectral components of S of T. A single tone FM signal S of T equal AC cosine 2 pi FCT plus beta sine 2 pi FMT is expanded as AC J sub N of beta cosine 2 pi FC plus FM FMT. And uh, this is a sinusoidal function, and the average value of a sinusoidal function is just the amplitude square over 2. So this is AC square over 2. So note that S of T consists of an infinite number of Fourier terms, and the power in S of T will be equal to the power in the respective Fourier components. طبعاً هاي هي uh, this is, we are referring to Parseval's power theorem. Any term, any term in S of t, takes the form AC, J sub N of beta cosine 2 pi FC plus N F M T. This is a typical term in this series. Um, it's a sinusoidal term, and this is the amplitude of this sinusoidal term and the average power in a sinusoidal uh, function is the amplitude square divided by 2. So this, power, this term has an average power of AC square J sub N of beta square divided by 2. Now, using this basic idea, we find that the total average power in S of T equal also the total average power in the respective terms here. So we have AC J0 square of beta divided by 2, which is the power corresponding to N equal to 0, plus J sub 1 square times AC square over 2. This is the power corresponding to N equal 1. And then AC square J sub minus 1 of beta uh, 
uh, square divided by two, and uh, we recall that J1 square of beta equal J sub minus one square of beta. And similarly, we can uh, sum over all, over all terms. So we have AC square over two, uh, this term J zero square of beta, plus J1 square of beta, plus J minus one of beta square plus J sub two square of beta plus J minus two square of beta plus, and so on. Again, uh, this term and this term are equal, this term and this term are equal, and so on. So AC square over two equal J sub zero square of beta plus twice J one square of beta plus twice J two square of beta and so on. And using um, the property of uh, the Bessel functions, the summation, the summation of all these Bessel terms equal one. So we have AC square over two. Um, اللي نوضح فيها فكرة الباندويد للإف إم سيجنال وكيف بنحسبها. إكزامبل، uh, find the 99% power bandwidth of an إف إم سيجنال when beta equals 1. Now, the general equation for um, S of T is AC summation J sub N of beta cosine 2 pi fc plus n fm times t. The first five terms corresponding to beta equal 1, j sub n of 1, are obtained from the table. This is the table beta, beta equal 1. This is j0 of 1, j1 of 1, J2 of 1, J3 of 1, J4 of 1, J5 of 1, and so on. So this is beta, and these are the corresponding values of uh, the Bessel uh, coefficient. Um, J0 of 1, 0.7652, J1 of 1, 0.4401, J2 of 1.1149, J3 of 1 equals 0 0.01956, and J4 of 1 equals 0 0.002477. Uh, now the total average power in S of T is just AC square over 2. But S of T, S of T, consists of an infinite number of sinusoidal terms. فحتى نوجد الباندويث بالأول ناخد ال significant terms حوالين ال carrier frequency يعني بناخد الترم حوالين ال carrier frequency حوالين ال carrier frequency زائد FM ال carrier frequency زائد 2 FM وبنشوف بنجمع مثل ما عملنا بالأمثلة السابقة إنه بنحاول إن نوقف وقت اللي بنوصل للنسبة اللي بدنا إياها يعني بناخد اللي بالأول كارير إذا حصلنا على النسبة هو بالتو سايد باندز كفاية ما وصلنا بنعود بناخد الترمز اللي اللي حواليهم أن سو أن فهذا اللي بنعمله فإحنا بنجرب في البداية إن نجرب نشوف وين وين السيجنيفيكان ترمز اللي حوالين الكارير فريكونسي اللي لازم ناخدها بالاعتبار لحتى نوصل للنسبة المئوية اللي بدي إياها اللي هي تسعة وتسعين في المية. So let us uh, try to find the average power in the terms at FC, FC plus FM, FC minus FM, FC plus 2 FM, and FC minus 2 FM. So we have five terms. Uh, the power at the carrier, شفناه, is just AC square J0 square of beta divided by 2. The term at FC plus FM, AC J1 of beta square divided by 2, 
at fc minus fm the same ac square j minus one square of beta divided by two fc plus two fm ac square j two square of beta divided by two and fc minus two f m ac square j minus two square of beta divided by two and uh, these coefficients are given here <clears throat> So the average power in these five spectral terms is P average equals AC square over two is a common factor. And then we have J1, uh, J0 of beta square plus twice uh, J1 of beta square plus twice J2 of beta square. Um, these are the coefficients. 0.7655 and so on. We add these terms and we arrive at this result 0.9993 AC square over 2. This is the total average power. And so, um, considering only these five spectral components, we have achieved the desired percentage, which is a percentage of greater than 99%. Hence, these terms contain 99.9% .9 of the total average power. As such, uh, the 99.9% .9 power bandwidth is this bandwidth equal um, the difference between the highest frequency component, which we considered Fc plus 2 Fm minus the lowest Fc minus 2 Fm, and this equals 4 Fm. So the 99% the bandwidth for an Fm modulated signal with beta equal 1 is 4 Fm. Uh, this is a simulation of the previous example in the time and the frequency domain. So we have uh, assumed a message signal sine 2 pi fm uh, 100t uh, applied to a, an fm modulator with sensitivity of uh, 100 hertz per volt and this is what we obtain this is our time function this is our message signal and this is our signal in the frequency domain we have two spectral lines at 100 and minus 100 this is the carrier frequency, the unmodulated carrier frequency, 5 sine, 2 pi, 1000 T. We have one impulse at 1000, another impulse at minus 1000. Now this uh, figure in red, this is, uh, this is the FM modulated signal in the frequency domain. In the frequency domain, we see um, uh, both the positive and the negative uh, parts of the spectrum. And we can see that these are the significant terms. We can zoom in this uh, spectrum, and we can see that for this particular case, uh, the bandwidth is the difference between 1200 and 800, which is 400 hertz. So this is uh, now this, this function, 5 cosine 2 pi FCT plus 5 sine 2 pi 100 T, this is the function in the time domain, and this is the Fourier transform. This is the Fourier transform. These two are the Fourier transform of this um, FM modulated signal. Another example, find the 99% power bandwidth of an FM signal when beta equal 0.2. Um, S of T equal AC, again, summation J sub N of beta cosine 2 pi FC plus N FMT. Now, the Fourier, um, the Fourier coefficients or the Bessel functions corresponding to beta equal 0.2 are, or beta equal 0.2, J0 of beta 0.99, J1 of beta 0 0.0995, J2, 0 0.0050, and then 
these terms become uh, uh, negligible. Uh, for beta equal 0.2, J0 of 0.2 equal 0.99, J1 equal 0, uh, J1 of 0.2 equal 0 0.0995, and J2 of 0.2 equal 0 0.0049835. Now the power in the carrier and the two side bands at FC, FC plus FM and FC minus FM, we're, we're, we're finding the power in the carrier plus this uh, upper side band and this lower side band in these three terms and the power is AC square over 2 J0 square of 0.2 plus twice J1 square of 0.2 again equal AC square over 2 times 0.9999 therefore 99.99 percent of the total power is found in the carrier and the two side bands. So the 99% bandwidth when beta equal 0.2 is twice the message frequency FM. Uh, the power in the carrier and this term and this term, these three terms make up more than 99% of the total average power when beta is small. هنا في هاي الرسمة بنعمل simulation بس نطلع على the frequency domain. So when beta equal 0.2, our message signal, our test signal is signed to pi 100t. This is the time function, and this is the carrier um, uh, cosine to pi 1000t. This is our uh, uh, this is the sinusoidal uh, carrier, and this is uh, the spectrum of the FM modulated signal, and this is a zoom in of the spectrum in the neighborhood of FC equal 1000. So we can see uh, a term at FC, a term at FC plus FM, and another term at FC minus FM. وطبعاً بننتبه that this spectrum is quite similar to that of a normal AM signal. لما ال bandwidth لل FM signal يكون مساوي لل bandwidth لل AM signal بنسميها narrow band narrow band FM. لما ال bandwidth يكون أكبر من ال bandwidth لل AM signal بنسميها wide band FM. And the bandwidth is twice the message bandwidth. This is called narrow band FM. Um, another example of a wide band FM when beta equal 5, we have this message M of T equal 25 uh, cosine 2 pi 500 T and uh, with a sensitivity of 100 hertz per volt we obtain uh, a beta, a modulation index beta equal five, and we can see that we have many, many significant frequency components that make up the spectrum of the FM modulated signal. So we call this a wide band FM. Wide band FM, meaning the bandwidth of the signal is wide and it's much larger than the bandwidth of the normal AM signal. Uh, when beta equal five, we can show that 98% of the power bandwidth falls in a bandwidth of uh, 12 times the message frequency. That is uh, six spectral lines to the right of FC, which is 5,000 and six spectral lines to the left of the carrier frequency. And the bandwidth is uh, 12 times FM equals 6,000 Hertz. Akhiran, uh, 
what we call Carson's rule, um, a 98 power bandwidth of an FM signal can be estimated using Carson's rule B sub T equal twice beta plus one times FM. This is a handy formula for calculating the bandwidth of an FM signal. And this, uh, this rule works well when the message signal is continuous. That is, it cannot be used when the message contains discontinuities and as in the case of a square function. So for a sinusoidal signal, this, uh, this formula works well. Uh, one example, find the bandwidth of the FM signal uh, S of t equal AC cosine 2 pi FCT plus sine 2 pi FMT. Now, the coefficient which multiplies the sine is the modulation index, which in this case is 1. So beta, beta is 1. And using Carson's rule, the, the bandwidth is twice times beta, which is 1, plus 1 times fm, so the bandwidth is 4 fm. Another example, find the bandwidth of the fm signal, s of t equal ac cosine 2 pi fct plus 5, plus 5 sine 2 pi fmt. In this case, beta, the modulation index is 5, and so we have the bandwidth equal twice times 5 plus 1 times fm equals 12 fm. These are the same results as was obtained using the spectral, the spectral analysis. Hi, uh, here is the end of the lecture. Until then.